Google's latest AI tool, AI Studio, with real-time AI, meaning I can stream my screen and Google will see exactly what I'm talking about, what I'm referencing, and everything that's on my screen. So I could break down maybe playing a game, a strategy game, get its advice, or maybe I'm inside of a Google Ads dashboard and it can teach me how to set up an ad campaign or anything. I've seen people use this for like trivia, web design, video editing, pretty much everything. It's pretty insane. It's basically like having a real-time mentor or tutor. Today, I'm gonna to go ahead and share my screen with Google's Gemini 2.0 AI and ask it questions as I go through some Google Ad accounts, setting up some Google Ads, and just anything like that, just for this demonstration. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing well, thanks for asking. How are you doing today? Pretty good, I'm just looking to get some help with one of my Google Ad accounts here. Okay, I understand that you're looking for some help with your Google Ads account. What do you need help with specifically? Well, you see, this is a client that came to us. They're saying that they're getting no results. So maybe we could just go through the account together and figure out what's wrong and anything we can improve upon. Certainly, it looks like you have a client who is not getting the results they expected from their Google Ads campaign. Let's start by taking a look at the data. I see that the mobile bootless sandblasting search campaign has a budget of 43 New Zealand dollars per day and a status of limited by budget. The optimization score is 75.7%, which could be improved. Do you want to go into detail about that, or do you want to see something else? Tell me about what you're seeing here in regards to the cost and their conversions. How do things look there? Okay, looking at the data, the cost for the campaign is 262 New Zealand dollars and one cent, while there are zero conversions. This indicates that the client has spent money on ads but hasn't achieved any desired outcomes such as sales or leads. Would you like to dive into what might be causing the lack of conversions? Yeah, can you tell me? Uh, why don't you guide me? Sure, let's start by looking at the clicks and impressions data. The campaign has received 623 clicks from 8,966 impressions. This indicates that the ads are being seen, but the click-through rate, center, is low. Would you like me to explain what center means? Uh, no, I want you to actually tell me what we should look at to improve this. Is there anything you want me to navigate to or click on that I can show you? Okay, let's take a look at the keywords that are being used in the campaign. Could you click on mobile bootless sandblasting search to see the details of that specific campaign? All right, here we go. Um, these are the keywords and the match types. And then here's some of the relevant data all on the screen. Okay, I see the keywords and their match types. It appears that several keywords are set to broad match. Broad match can result in your ads showing for a wider range of search terms, many of which might not be very relevant which can result in low conversion rates. You may oh. want to refine this to phrase match or exact match to get more qualified traffic. Really? What do you think? I agree with that. Do you think that's the main issue? What about when we sort it by cost? We can see that the most broad match keywords are the ones that have triggered the most spend, right? You can see that right here. Yes, you are absolutely correct. Sorting by cost shows that the broad match keywords, sandblasting and sandblast, are indeed responsible for the majority of the spend. This reinforces the idea that refining the match type is likely a good step to improve the campaign's performance. Hmm. Would you like to explore ways to change the keywords match types? No, I know how to do that. What if I wanted to create a new ad for this? Could you walk me through that? Yes, I can definitely help with that. To create a new ad, you'll first want to navigate to the ads section, which you've already done. From there, do you see the blue plus sign that you can click? Yep, I'll click it now. Great. After you click that blue plus button, you will see a screen prompting you to choose your ad type. Do you see that? Yeah, what, what kind of ad do you think we should run here? Given that we are focusing on search terms, a responsive search ad would be a good choice. This will allow Google to automatically test different headlines and descriptions to see what performs best. Would you like to proceed with a responsive search ad? Yeah, let's go ahead and set up a search ad. Um, I already pulled it up. Can you just maybe walk me through what we should do here or some ad copy ideas? I see Google kind of already put some in by default, but these really don't look good. I want to remove most of these. Okay. I see you have the responsive search ad setup page open. It looks like Google has provided some default headlines and descriptions. It's good that you want to customize them as those generic suggestions are not always optimal. Do you want to remove the existing headlines and descriptions? Yep. Already did that. Great, now you're starting with a clean slate. You can use the various fields on the page to enter new headlines and descriptions. Also, I see that the page is giving you some keyword suggestions. 
Would you like me to guide you through creating new headlines and descriptions? Could you give me two examples of headlines we could use that's relevant to this client? Okay, here are two examples of headlines you could use for this client. Mobile sandblasting services and rust removal experts. Okay. These are based on dustless blasting for cars, boats, and more. Are those helpful? What was that last one? I didn't hear it. Second headline suggestion was dustless blasting for cars, boats, and more. Would you like me to repeat any of the other suggestions or offer more examples? I think those are pretty good. Um, if we look at the previews right here on the right side, what do you think of these? Do you like them or should we change anything here? The previews look pretty good. The headlines are clear and the descriptions provide some additional information. However, the ad strength indicator is showing poor. To improve this, we should add more headlines and descriptions. Would you like help generating those? Got it. Or do you have some ideas? LD, include more keywords in your headlines and make your descriptions more unique. Are you ready to add more headlines and description options? Let's hold on for that for just one second. I'm going to go ahead and move forward here. Yeah, the client also brought up he's not sure if he's tracking conversions properly. He wants to track calls from his website and form submissions. Do you see that properly set up here? Okay, it looks like your client wants to track calls from his website and form submissions as conversions. I see the conversion summary page is open. Under the contact section, it shows that a website conversion is set up. Underneath that, I also see a smart campaign ad clicks to call conversion that is set up. Is that the only call conversion you are looking to use? These were set up by default by Google. I'm looking for guidance on if I should set up website call tracking and form tracking. And if so, are those already set up in the account or do we need to go ahead and set that up now? Okay, I see your concern. It is important to ensure your conversions are being tracked correctly. The phone call lead conversion action is set to track calls from smart campaigns, which is not ideal for tracking calls from your website. It looks like there is already a contact conversion action that will track website form submissions. So it looks like you will need to set up a website call conversion to properly track that type of conversion. Would you like guidance on how to do this? Yeah, can you show me or tell me? I can certainly tell you. To set up website call tracking, you'll want to start by clicking the plus create conversion action button at the top of the screen. Do you see that button? Yep, just clicked it. Okay, after you click the button, you should see a new screen. Here, you will want to select the option that says phone calls, which will allow us to track the calls from the website. Do you see the button that says phone calls? Got it. Which one do I press now? It looks like you are on the new conversion action page in Google Ads. To set up call tracking, you should click the phone calls button. Which one now? It gives me three options here on my screen. I see three options below. Select the source of the phone calls you'd like to track. Which of those options you choose depends on how your phone calls are being generated. If you are getting calls from your ad extensions or call only ads, you should select the first option. If the calls come from a phone number on your website, you would select the second option. If the clicks are on your number from a mobile website, select the third option, which is the correct one in your case. Let's do call extension and then can you help me set up the last couple of steps? Okay, it looks like you selected calls from ads using call extensions or call only ads and you've clicked continue. Now you're on the create a conversion action to track calls from your call extension, location extension, and call only ads page. It asks you to select a goal in action optimization, enter a conversion name, choose a value and count and call length. Are you planning to use this tracking for leads yeah, or something else? I'm looking to track phone calls here. So could you tell me step by step which one of these I press or what I type in? Okay, let's go step by step. First, you'll need to enter a conversion name something that will help you identify the specific conversion action later. Then under value, you can select how to value this type of conversion and either specify a value or to not use a value for this conversion action. Finally, in count, you'll choose whether to count every conversion or only one per click or interaction. Are you ready to enter these settings? Yeah. Or would you like to go over? As far as value, would I give it a value or would I say don't use a value? Under value, if you want to track the value of your phone call conversions, you would select Use the same value for each conversion and set a value for each call. If you're not concerned about tracking value or if you do not know the value of a conversion, you can select don't use a value for this conversion action, not recommended. Got it, okay, thank you, that's been helpful. Great, is there anything else I can help you with? I think that's all for now, thank you.